In this video, I want to share some things I found interesting from WWDC 2025 and all the Vision OS 26 updates that were announced there and why they show that spatial computing is far from dead and instead that Apple is slowly playing the long game here and investing heavily in this platform. So the first thing is AI is coming to Vision OS and cross Apple platforms. So ever since the ChatGPT announcement and all the AI boom, I've always been interested in exploring the intersection of AI and spatial computing. If you imagine AI as the brain and spatial computing as its natural UX UI, I find that intersection very fascinating. And I've always wanted to explore that. But one of the steep barriers was not only the barriers to entry in terms of skills and learning new frameworks outside of the Apple ecosystem, but also the cost, right? If you use something like OpenAI's API, you have to pay for it, right? So it was not really that easy. But now Apple's removing all those barrier with the announcement of the foundational model framework. And this is essentially a native Apple framework that works across platforms, Vision OS as well. And what this gives is it gives access to Apple's on-device LLM for free. So the key thing here, it's free, inference is free, and the model runs on the device. It's becoming very easy to embed AI into your Vision OS applications. And I'm really excited to explore this intersection and really innovate there. Now, the second update that I found fascinating was the announcement of spatial widgets. So for example, the calendar widget would be stuck on your wall, a glimpse of the weather, your recipe widget, it might be stuck next to your rice cooker in the kitchen or whatever. Such a perfect example of ambient computing where your most used apps would get sprinkled throughout your environment in the real world in a very natural and seamless way. This really gives us a glimpse into the future where our digital lives seamlessly blended into the real world without causing too much clutter just naturally, seamlessly, beautifully integrated into your homes. And again, developers can create these for their own apps by using the widget kit framework. Now the third update, to be completely honest, I was not very happy about, mainly because it sure locked some of my course content. Not a lot, just a few, like a lesson or two. <laughs> so if you don't know, I create online courses on Vision OS, preparing for the next big thing. My latest course, which I intentionally did not complete till this WWDC was over, precisely because I knew things like this would happen and I would need to make updates anyway. So the latest course had a full, I think, 30, 50 minute video on creating gestures. And also there was one on view attachments and all that. But those two lessons in particular are getting Sherlocked, if you don't know, in the Apple world means Apple announces something simpler, which means you, whatever you create or do is made redundant. So yeah, so the reason I tell this story is because the next update is essentially something more general. It's that Apple's making easier to create apps with easier APIs. And there's just a general theme of unification across different frameworks. To give some examples, now you could add gestures to your models with a single modifier and then same for view attachments. And then there are things like eye scrolling, which is a new feature announced with Vision OS 26, where you can scroll with just your eyes. And again, that could be added with just a single modifier. And volumes, which was really hard to work with before, is getting much easier to work with. A lot of the Swift UI views, like alerts, menus, uh, popovers, and all that, you can present that within volumes. And finally, you have a hand tracking at 90 hertz now, which means games or apps based on a lot of hand interactions will be much more smoother and faster. For someone who wants to create Beat Saber, this is the perfect opportunity. But in general, if I were to summarize the framework improvements, the threat seems to be that things are getting easier to create and there are incremental improvements across different aspects of the frameworks. And there's just this sense of deeper integration. So simpler code, deeper integration, and more features added like eye scrolling, all good news because it again shows that Apple's heavily invested in this platform and they are playing the long game here. Now, the next update that I found interesting was that Vibe Coding is coming to Xcode. At my current workplace, we use AI a lot. We got access to all of like Microsoft's AI suit. So things like GitHub Copilot, Obviously, at the moment, I think it's more at the level of a junior engineer, which you constantly need to handle and be very precise with. But again, it shows massive future potential, right? But one of the key struggles I have always had as an iOS developer in my company was that Xcode never had like first class AI assistant. You had to use GitHub Copilot Xcode extension. It was not really ideal. But now Xcode's getting an AI assistant. Xcode's AI assistant has full context over your code base. Plus, you can add more context by dragging in a specific file if you're searching for something within that file. 
or attaching images. So there's different ways of adding context with Xcode now. And this is all great because the more context AI has over your code base and over the specific question you're asking, the better the answers will be. And also it's just not a chat bot, which you can ask questions to and you have to copy paste the answers. It can directly edit your files and it can write code for you within your IDE. So it can both read and edit. And finally, if you use to like a lot of agent tech AI, you will quickly figure out that the AI does too much for like a little prompt you ask. And good thing about that that's coming with Xcode's AI, which I've not seen in other platforms, is that it's very easy to revert changes. There's a knob which you can like drag up and down to revert between different changes, which I found very useful. So that's all great. So Vibe Coding is coming for Xcode. Again, native first class support from Apple which essentially means it's easier for iOS devs and vision OS devs to become AI powered devs, right? We can leverage this to create applications much faster and much more efficiently. Now, the next one is something that I always had a suspicion about, which I more and more think is true. And that is that it seems to me like Apple's primary customer base for the Vision Pro is businesses at the moment. And let me tell you why. Just the weekend before DC, I went to the Apple store here in my city so, you know, most Apple stores have this demo space where people can get a demo of the Vision Pro. And usually when I pass by this, it always looks full and buzzling. I might be exaggerating, but not full, full, but like full enough to make it look busy. But this time when I went to that store, what I noticed was it was pretty empty. So I naturally went up to one of the store employees and asked like, well, what's the sales like? Are a lot of people trying this device and all that stuff. And he told me that one of the typical scenarios he sees is that a business would come in say a team of employees would come in from a business they would get a demo of the vision pro and then they would buy so that immediately told me okay actually it makes sense for businesses to be the primary customer base for the vision pro at the moment because it's pricey it has a lot of enterprise use cases again given the quality of the vision OS ecosystem the things it could do there's a lot of applications there and number three with just the announcements at the wwdc last week you see a lot of enterprise focused APIs, right? Like now you can block screen recordings, you can get access to the main camera feed and shared spaces. These are all enterprise focused features and quite a few of them were announced in WWDC 2025. This again confirmed my suspicion that Vision Pro's primary customer base, at the moment at least, is businesses. And this is something you commonly see in new emerging technology, first adopted by the enterprise sector before sprinkling onto the mainstream. Yeah, so that was pretty interesting. And also related to this, it looks like Apple's getting into gaming with the Vision Pro. It's adding support for the PSVR Sense controllers, which I found surprising because they've always tried to position it not as a gaming device, but as a productivity tool. But maybe they realized that, you know, gaming is the big market for all the other XR vendors, like the Quest series and all. So maybe they're trying to leverage that or get into that space a bit, at least to survive in the short run. They definitely seem to support gaming now. Although this is something I've never explored or I don't think I'll ever be interested in exploring the gaming space. Anyways, so that's the other one, right? Enterprise and gaming is coming to Vision Pro and it's getting vastly enhanced. Now, the next thing that I found fascinating was spatial personas and the updates they're getting. So my first experience of social VR was not with Apple Vision Pro, but with the Oculus Go headset. When I first got that, there was an app called Altspace VR. Even though the quality was really bad, you're like cartoon avatars, but that sense of presence of truly being there with someone else is something magical. This is something that it's really hard to describe unless you try it. It's really something that a video call or a Skype call or a WhatsApp call could never replicate. Now, compare this to what Apple has, right? If you look at the quality of the spatial personas and the updates they're getting, the eyebrow movements, the facial tracking, and now spatial personas get a full side view profile as well. These are getting like very, very realistic, like scarily realistic. So imagine you wanna watch a movie with your loved ones, right? They're in different parts of the world, but if you could have home theater in the Vision Pro in a VR environment and have them appear as spatial personas in the theater, so people from remote and local join in a single theater, watch a movie together, very realistically looking at each other as if they are really there, that's something magical, right? And with the latest updates to spatial personas, all the things I've just described are possible for devs to create. You can create local experiences in addition to remote ones and Apple's spatial personas getting very, very realistic. 
So this social aspect of spatial computing, I think will be huge, especially when this device becomes lighter and spread across to more people. Right now, the social experiences created by developers would be quite empty because just not many people have the headset. But as soon as this becomes mainstream or more mainstream, the social aspect could be very huge. And the thing I found exciting about this WWDC is that Apple again has laid out the groundwork, right? It's given all the tools you need to create such experiences. So that's all the updates that I found interesting. And basically the thread is pretty obvious to me that in the short run, yeah, the headset is expensive, it is heavy, not many people have it, so it can look like it's dead. But what many people are not seeing is all these updates that I just described now are laying out the groundwork and foundation for people to create experiences in preparation for the future where this becomes lighter and cheaper and more mass spread. And to me, that future is inevitable. The question is how long it will take? I don't know the answer but I'm sure that future is coming and the quality factor that Apple brings with it is huge, which you can just see from the updates. And one thing is also clear to me that Apple's not giving up on this vision. Instead, it's doubling down, investing heavily and making incremental progress. So I found that pretty exciting. And that's why I personally believe it's a great bet to make as a dev or as a builder to start learning how to build apps for this platform. And if you're interested in doing that, I've got a platform called Reality Uni, where I have courses and books on how to build spatial apps for the Vision Pro. And also, I've got a written version of this video in my blog in Reality Uni, so do check that out as well. So yeah, very exciting times. What I'm personally planning to do is invest heavily in this platform and be very patient, right? And see where this could go. All the best, and I'll see you soon.